Looks like we're live. Everyone, welcome to Is Your Six Covered? We're here to talk about ropes and knots, and we have the we have Matt from Resisted Tyranny, which is going to be awesome. Um, so uh, thanks, Matt, for joining us. We've got a few more people that should be popping up here shortly. Um, and thank you guys for all you know tuning in to watch. All right. Anything you want to tell the, the gents and ladies out there? Well, thanks for having me, man. Uh, it's been a while since I've uh, been on one of your one of your shows, so this is cool. Um, I think I'm going to learn a lot because it's been 20 years since I've done any knot work, so <laughs> that's cool. I can't wait. You know what's fun? I was looking, I was checking out some stuff earlier today, and there's a lot, a lot of information that if you know, like basically, like 15, 15 knots, you can build. You know, you can build anything from, uh, you know, some type of boat, log boat kind of deal to tents to just about everything to tie stuff together. So it's pretty cool. We're going to learn the family of eights, and uh, which is in the rescue realm of knots, and then we're going to do some uh, different types of knots. So we'll get into it a little bit, but we're going to start off real basic, Matt, so, it, you know, as you progress... As long as you remember the first knot and we work our way to the next knot, it'll make it a lot easier than just trying to learn the hard, detailed stuff. So let's get started. All right. Let's start off with the figure eight on a bike. And it's basically a stopper knot. You'll hear a figure eight stopper knot. And a lot of these knots that you'll learn, not so much these ones, but you know, you, like the Navy, the Navy has certain ways of doing stuff. The fire department has certain ways of tying the same knot. Um, you know, and all those different aspects, whether it's mer um, that type of stuff. So a knot you may learn have learned in the Navy could be called, say, X knot, and you might learn it today as Y knot. But it could be basically a knot you already know. Does that make sense? Why not? All right, so the figure eight stopper knot. Let's do orange. Let me get rid of this um, silly thing here real quick. Turn it off. All right. Got a little more room now so you can see. All right. Just like the knot says, we're basically going to be doing an eight. So this is a this is a bite. Okay. Anytime you bend the rope, that's a bite. This is a marriage where it's crossed. Okay, so we're gonna go across and then up through. So you're gonna go all the way around to go through and make an eight. If you screw it up, it'll be an overhand knot. Okay, you're already there. All right. Dang, you're good. All right. So remember that knot. That's a figure eight stopper knot. Now that ex that exact same thing you just did, double the rope. So now there's, so it's doubled on itself. Go around and go like that. No, one more one more half turn, Matt. That's an that's an overhand. So go all the way around the other. Okay, keep going. Keep going all the way around. Yeah, there you go. So that's a figure eight with a bite. I had a figure eight on a bite. Now this knot here is a good knot for when you're doing when you're doing uh, attaching to an anchor. So like say you have a tree over here, and then say you have a strap and a carabiner. This would be now I'm talking pretend this is half inch kern mantle or or some type of good rope, but basically that would be the knot you would use where you could set up a simple just rope system and and then you would work and repel off the side of here. Whether it's so this, a this is uh, something that climbers use. Correct. You're gonna learn a lot of ropes, a lot of rescue rope knots today. That's that's kind of the stuff I do is on the side of rescue. So if you know these knots, and the reason why these knots are better than the other knots that you may learn is because the percentage of the rope being tied, so the knot, each knot you're basically losing a percentage depending on the knot. So like 
This is 550 cord, so it's rated at 550. And some P cord now is up to 750, 750 pounds, that is. But anytime you put a knot in it, whatever knot it is, like I'll say, you know, I'll just do whatever knot. Now I just lost I just lost a percentage of the rope because of the knot. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. This is no longer this will no longer hold 550 pounds per se because of the knot. And that's with any rope. See what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So the the so I'm getting back to that is the reason why you have the, the family of eights is because that knot is going to give you a third. You're going to basically take away a third of the knot, or some of the knots can be up to 50% 50, 50 of the rope's um, weight. Now, I'm tying with the P cord. I'm tying with P cord. I mean, it's my kids' uh, bright stuff that they make the bracelets with, but it's basically it's 550 pounds. This isn't what you, we would use for, say, rope rescue, obviously, but this gives us an easy way to tie knots to show people how to make knots. So that's the reason why I'm using it. We got six viewers, which is great. Uh, let's see if we can get comments so we can say hi. Now, the group chat is what? Is that just me and you talking right now? Or it says I are live, then the, the chat room is... There's two people out in the chat room. Okay, I see seven viewers. Seven viewers and two two comments. What are they What are they saying? Jennifer Young just said, uh, "Have a have a trade great chat, guys." And N W O I S at or N W O I S six 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 says, "Good evening, folks." Ah, oh, I want to say hi to that guy. I believe it's New World Order is Satan. Is basically yes. what he's saying, right? Yeah. Yep. All right, let me uh, get to the thing so I can see the comment. You want to be the comment, the comment man? <laughs> Where's Jennifer Young when you need her, right? I think she uh, uh, is just getting back from vacation or still on <laughs> vacation. That's cool. Uh, hopefully she'll have some videos of uh, camping. Oh, a couple more people came out. Jerry That's Pruitt cool. and Caregiver7751. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Appreciate it. So, okay, so we're basically at the figure eight. If you guys have any questions about a knot, um, put it out there and we'll try to get to it. Or if you if you have a knot that uh, you want to try to remember or you learned something about, maybe we can figure it out together if it's a knot that I know. But uh, we're going to have some fun today, so let's try it out. All right, so... Let's do it now. Here's the figure eight on a bike, right? The one we did where we doubled it, went across, and through. Yep. Okay. Now say, say you have a light pole, and I make this big, I make this big old loop here, and I don't have any anchor straps, and I don't have any carabiners. You know what a carabiner is, right? It's the metal piece that attaches, like the keychain deals. Yeah. Okay. So say I want to, I don't have any of that. I don't have an anchor. I don't have anchor straps and I don't have a carabiner. So there's this big light pole or some big bomb anchor that I, I can't really climb up to the top of it and then place the loop over, right? But I, but I want this to be, let's do this. Let me grab some. Uh, let me grab something. So here's my Arizona iced tea. This is a, <laughs> a 20 foot tall. This is a 20-foot tall, bomb-proof anchor, like a big-ass oak tree, okay? So, <laughs> I got I to gotta work with what I got, right? All right. So, this is 20 feet tall. <laughs> so, I can't build a big-ass loop and put it over the tree like this, right? And then slide it down so I can repel off the end of something with the working end, right? Is, right. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. I must be doing something wrong then if you're with me because I'm not good at that kind of stuff. All right. So the reason why you're going to want to know this knot, this is a figure eight follow-through. So back to the first knot you learned, Matt, 
it's going to be where you just go around and through and you make the eight. And put it in the middle of the rope more than, than I just did because I kind of want to make it harder. Okay, that's perfect. All right, so here's the big Arizona mountain of doom, right? Let's see if I can find something taller. Here we go. This ain't going to work either. Uh, let's see. Still too short. All right. Here's what we got to do. This end right here, pretend this end's really long. Okay? We're going to follow it. It's going to be a figure eight follow through. So we're going to take the end of this rope. And remember, this one's really long, Matt, right? Yeah. Pretend. You're going to follow it all the way through. So you're going to do exactly what the other one was. So you're going you're gonna to go across. You're going to go all the way around. You're going to keep following it. Exactly. Just lay it right on top of itself. It's kind of blurry. Sorry. Ah. Get in there. All right. So you're going to end up with that. You're going to end up with a figure eight on a bike, but you did a follow through because you couldn't go around. You couldn't climb up 20 feet and go around the tree. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm doing something wrong, though. All right, let me go for it. Let's check it out. All right. So the figure eight, you need one more. There you go. Let me make this a bit longer. Okay, so you got the figure eight, right? Okay, now see your left hand, or your, yeah, your left hand. Pretend that's the long piece of rope, which it probably is, right? It is a long piece of rope. Okay, so now with your short, your right hand, Follow it all the way through. Do the exact same thing with that rope. But, but start way. on the top. Start on the top. Pretend you're going around a big old tree. Nope. Follow it exactly how it is. Okay. There you go. You're going to do it perfect. You don't have much room, so you're going to need a little more where you're at. But you're going to have to give yourself more. Keep going all the way through. That tail should be at the bottom. Oh, uh, okay. So you're going to have to make that loop that you're holding on to really short or move the knot down. Okay, so I see. So, yeah, just follow it all the way. Make sure it touches the whole time and you'll get it right. Yep, I got it. Okay. So now that knot you just learned, that would be the one that you couldn't slip over, you know, something tall, like a big oak tree, right? Right. Now you don't have to have a strap. You don't have to have a carabiner. So you're minimalist thinking for rescue. So that's two pieces of, of stuff you didn't have to bring. Okay? You're giving me the look like I'm not sure what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> no, no. I, know, I, I I'm following you. Okay. So that is the figure eight follow through. Now, another knot, which is basically the same thing, but we're going to go through the other end. It's a bend. Anytime you hear the word bend, you should have two opposing tails. Oh, I got to You should have two opposing tails when you're done with the knot. Okay. And that's kind of a general rule. There's always going to be a knot that it doesn't work on. But when you think bend, think opposing tails. So I'm going to do that same figure eight that we just learned, just a figure eight stopper knot or figure eight. I'll drop my other rope here. Okay. So this is one tail. This is the short tail right here. There you go. So here's the tail. Now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go opposing tails. So you're going to go this way and follow it all the way through. So that when you're done tying it, you have a tail on this side 
and a tail on that side. You're going to make a loop. I'm going to tie it with two different colors so you can see the difference. <coughs> so I'm going, you're going to go like this, opposing tails. You're going to go, they're going to cross each other. This rope looks the same color, but it's not. So I'm going to go around. I need to figure eight it again. Yeah, you're going to do the same same thing. You keep I'll keep with the eight family. Okay. See, and then you'll it'll look like this. Gotta make this tail a little longer. Hold on. All right. Now this knot you can use to join the same same size rope together. You can use it to make a loop. Um, you can back it up with an overhand on each end. You want just so the tails aren't flapping around. So you can put one on both ends. But after you tie the knot, you want to clean it up so it lays nice. Let me see if I can get in here so I can see if there's a... Okay, I think I got it. Any uh, any comments on the thing? I haven't had a chance to figure it out. For some reason, when I go to my YouTube, it doesn't show me having a video up. Okay, so I have the loop and the two opposing tails. Perfect. Yes? Is the knot right, though? It doesn't look... Yeah, that looks like it. So the cleaner the knot, yeah, that looks good. Yeah, once you flip, turned it over, it definitely showed the eight. Um, the cleaner the knot, it may not, it's probably not to say that it's going to hold more, but a cleaner knot's a safer knot. So if it's easier for someone to go, oh, yeah, that's a figure eight bend, or, you know, it's easier when it's not a big. So that's the reason why if it's nice and clean, like you had it at the end where, you know, you could see. Uh, right. It wasn't all raggedy looking. Yeah, once I tightened it up. Yeah, exactly. It I was able to up. see that eight a little bit better. Yeah, perfect. And that knot, the more you tie it, the easier it is, and the cleaner it comes out after a while. So that knot there, like I said, it can be used for it can be used for a lot of stuff. But you can basically you can extend a piece of rope. Like we have ropes, and it just depends. We have 150 footers, 200 footers, 250s, 300s, and a one 400. So if we need to attach, make one or two ropes long enough, this would be one of the knots we could use to make it longer. You say you uh, want to know who was out in the chat room? Yeah, let's let's say hi to whoever's out there. Let's see, uh, Bush Hunt's out there. Jerry, up, Bush Hunt? Jerry Pruitt, NWOIS666, cool. Frogger M3. Oh, very nice. He's a, a new, I'm a new subscriber to him, and he is to me as well. Haven't had uh, a chance to talk with him, but. Caregiver and Jennifer Young. Very cool. Thanks, everybody. Coming out. So you feel you feel pretty good with uh, the ones we've learned so far, Matt? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to practice, but, you know, like the, the, the figure eight knot, the, the first two, I done before it's just okay. been a while those those last two though I hadn't done that I can remember like I said the last time I really did any knot work was 1996 in the Navy yeah <laughs> it's time to re up the ante on the knots <laughs> <laughs> all right so along with the family of eights like we talked about this is a directional so a piece of rope is basically made to work in you know, in one direction, right, per se. So usually we have an anchor point, and then we have a, a working end that we're doing whatever with, whether we're building a Z-Rig or, you know, some type of mechanical um, a device to lower haul or whatever the case may be. But along with the rope, when you tie a, just say, a, a knot like this, okay, so just basically a, <clears throat> it's an overhand knot with a bite in it, 
this this rope will pull this way or that way, but it's not a knot that's designed to be pulled in those directions. And this knot is designed to be pulled from here. So they do have knots that are directional knots. And what I'll show you is the a knot that they use for tying a knot in the middle of a rope and designed to be directional, to be pulled in a certain direction. So you have Ta-da! The same piece of rope I've been using. <laughs> All right. So, only difference with this knot is you're gonna you're gonna twist it. Let me see if I can do it. So it looks better. You're gonna twist it over, and then you're gonna have your fingers attaching the two. And the best way to say it, I guess, is the piece that's towards me. The piece that's closest to me, I can pull and it can go to me without crossing over. You know, like if it was on this side, I wouldn't be able to pull it. Right. There you go. Perfect. So now you're going to drop this over underneath. You're going you're gonna to turn it. Check, check, check. There you go. Now there's going to be a hole there. See the hole where this piece is coming through? You're going to put that through there. And I'll have to tie it again because I had my hand blocking it. But what you're going to build is you're basically going to build a directional eight. Oh, so, okay. So see how that knot's pointed in line now that way? You could basically tie the exact opposite so it looked like that. So if you needed to maybe add an additional whatever, if this was a person or something you wanted to attach here, you could. So that's a directional eight. I'm going to click on you so I can watch you tie. Okay, so I have oh, the... Man, three viewers. They yeah. must hate my voice. <laughs> I have the... And then you twist it down and around. Yeah, flip. And as, you, as you're going, yeah, turn that. Yeah. Now grab the bite, which is the loop and put it back through where your left palm is. There should be a... See where that rope is towards the left hand that goes put it down? Down and up and up through? Mm, no. I think you're going to have to... Let's start over. Okay. So, make the loop. Yeah. I got it pinched. Perfect. Now... now Grab it and go underneath. And twist now you're it back flip up. Flip it right? towards you. So you have it. You're gonna flip it towards you, and then you're gonna spin it. Yeah. Grab the bite, and then you're just gonna put it in where that other rope is running, and then pull. I know it's yeah. kind of confusing. Wow, dude, I'm thinking way too hard about this, I think. <laughs> okay, got the loop. Yep, and that one piece is towards you, so that's good. So you're here. Now you, you're you going to basically wrap that rope and twist it. The twist is the key to get the eight. So then now grab this bite here. And oh, put it, I went the wrong way, okay. Put it through the rope, and then bam. I made a slip knot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hard part about knots. One little thing and you get, you've just invented something. <laughs> You're not twisting that bite though. The one that's the loop. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay, got that. Twist it around. Now twist it. Ah, oh, shit, I shouldn't have talked because you are right, here. Okay, now twist it. Um, okay, start over, go. Now twist it up. Turn it, turn it. Yeah, that way. Now grab that bite and put it down where the other rope is in your hand. Go the other way, though. The other way, other way, other way. Oh. Is there a loop there with one rope going through it? No, grab the, now grab both those ropes, though. The bite and that rope. 
Yeah, now grab the rope in your left hand and the bite and pull them together. I think when you pull together... I made another slip knot. Yeah. So the bite... Let me back up, man. It's easier to see. Let me, let me use some paracord, see if that's... Uh... Okay. And when you do that on the on the on the last part, you're gonna twist your left hand as well. So I'm throwing it underneath. I'm twisting, right? And I still have that rope captured right here. This one I have captured. Now I'm gonna twist that. So I have. See where that this rope is right here inside of your of the hole of the uh -huh. loop. You're gonna put it through there. But when you pull this knot, you have to pull the bite and this rope here. You turn it into a slip knot. It turns into an ugly knot. And then you end up with that. And that's a directional eight. Yeah, I keep making a slip knot. That's I right. failed this one. <laughs> you did it. All right, let's try it again. So you're gonna, you're gonna. Now, ah. I think that's it. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Champion of the world. Is this the tyranny? Matt, the man, the legend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. You want to try that again, or was that a fluke? Let's do it. We got uh, this. Okay. <laughs> Let's try this again. You're like, no, I got it. Let's move I on. Right. I'm just going to keep this like that. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in my bug out bag in case I need one. Okay. Loop. Yeah. Swoop. Through here. Aha. Uh, so you you got it. That's it. Directional figure eight. Whoo! Dang. It's a break time there. I need ice tea now. Now let me see if I can do it with the big rope that I had earlier and what the problem was. Okay. It is, it is easier to tie with this kind of rope than... Yeah, I noticed that. Let me go get a napkin. My uh, Arizona's sweating all over the place. All right, so let's try this. Loop. Round. Uh, that turns into... Get off it. Did it work? Got it. Uh, nope. Okay, see the rope in your left hand? That that rope needs to be, you need one more half twist in order for that to be captured inside the bite. There it is. Let me see. Is it it? That's it. That's the one right there. It just looks kind of funky with the big rope. Yeah. This is that mildew resistant mar marine rope, and my cat is attacking it. Get off it! <laughs> That's awesome. I don't know why I can't watch this shit. It's pissing me off. Um. <laughs> a guy out there, I'm a redneck cocker ham, says, I did it. My first knot ever. <laughs> That's awesome. Good job, redneck cocker ham. <laughs> Let's see. See if he wants to come join us. Yeah, it looks like everybody else out there is the same people as uh, we shouted out before. Cool. All right. All right, so we're going to learn some knots that aren't in the family of eights real quick, but it's a knot that you guys are going to 
you're going to enjoy because you can do a shit ton of stuff with this knot. Whether you want to, if you have a grappling hook and you have a, some rope and you want to toss it up into a tree or a house or a, a hotel or whatever the case may be, we're going to learn some knots on how to ascend up that rope with what we're going to make right now. I, I have a question for you. All right. A rock, a tree, I get it. Where did the hotel come from? I don't know. I, <laughs> if you want to get up a building, Shazam, yeah. that's the way to do it. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything tall, right, Matt? <laughs> uh, what else is tall? A bridge? You want to get to the top of a bridge and you don't want to walk around and walk on the top? I don't know. Maybe that's what the guys that put up the white flags did. Who knows? Yeah. They had a grappling hook. <laughs> I watched that video of yours on that, by the way. All right. So some you're going to hear double fishermen's, and basically this is the this knot here is actually pretty awesome because the harder you pull on it, the tighter. Let me get over here. The tighter it it is, and what I mean by that is as the pressure of both knots joining together basically squeezing down each other, it makes it even that much more of a, a tied knot. So we have to learn the basics first. And an overhand knot is basically the thing you tie when you're beginning to tie your shoe. Cockerham, this is going to be knot number two, but you've been tying knots all your life. You just didn't know it. You've been tying your shoes. Unless you're running around in Velcros or slippers, for the rest of your life. <laughs> you tied this knot, buddy. You tied it. All right, so that's an overhand knot. Bam. Okay? Simple. Now we're going to do a double overhand knot. So you're going to do the exact same thing. I need more rope. You're going to do the exact same thing, but you're going to cross over itself. Okay? Then you're going to you're going to put it through. So there's two loops you're putting it through. So see those two loops? That looks ugly. I just made it not disappear. <laughs> That's magic. Matt's magic trick of the night. Okay. Alakazam, Alakazoo. And you don't want to pull this tight. I made it disappear again. What the heck am I doing wrong? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, magic. You and Blaine have been hanging out together. Right. Here's what here's what here's what happens is some people they don't cross over, they go this way. They need to go across. Go the back side yeah, okay. They need to go across the rope, back on itself. Like that. So there'd be two loops there. And then as I come over, I'm gonna feed it through and I don't have enough rope, so hold on. So there's the back. I'm going to cross over the rope. I'm going to turn it now because I'm going to I'm going to go through through here. Through both of those. Through both of those. Like that. And then you got to slide it and not screw it up so it stays together. And that's the double overhand knot. And I'll show you the reason why we're not going to pull it real tight yet. Oh, okay. I got it. You can kind of work it to get it smaller, but you want to see an X. And that's not a. That's not. A uh oh. So you want to see that? This color sucks. Let me try a different color. It's like glowing or something. It's not. I don't know what it looks like on your screen, but. It's it's you can't t you can't decipher the lines of the knot. Yeah, that's a little better. You see this X here? Is this one that would like this would be a line of the X? This one, and then these two cross it to make like an X. Like yeah, an X. I think I'm just tighter than yours is. Okay. So that's a double overhand knot. Now, <clears throat> the fisherman, the double fisherman knot, I'm going to show you is the same thing we use in rescue, but we do three. So. If you want to do a fisherman knot where you're tying, like, say, a, well, there's a hundred different ways to tie, um, like, fly line to a, 
to your your fly, not to the fly, but to the from the floating line. I can't use my my uh, fishing vocabularies. I left it in the closet. I think the floating part of the line to the leader. I think that's yeah to the leader. This would be a knot you could use. So there's the double overhand. You're gonna end up with this knot here, and since I have them both tied already. Mm. And then you'll then you'll understand. And we're gonna make a prussic loop. Okay, see how that that knot right there made a perfect X? And it has to be that stupid color too, of course. See the X kinda? Yeah. Okay, so you want this one to look the same, and this one doesn't, so it, it needs to be retired. So let me start over. But this is basically it. I tied a knot. Let me just start over. It's so weird that color is like glowing. I think this is a good color, right? Yeah. All right, so a double overhand knot. I'm going across. Did you get to the that part down yet, Matt? Where you got the one double overhand knot? Yeah. Okay. So now you're going to take the other side. Let me get this knot out here. All right, like that one knot I taught you, you're going to have opposing tails. So here's the two tails. I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to slip that through those two loops. Okay. Okay, so now in order to make it easy on yourself, just flip the rope over and do the exact same knot you just did. You know, so the, basically, before you make another knot, you're making a slip knot. Yeah, basically, yeah, it would, it'll do that if you it'll want. It'll slip. Okay, just making sure I've got that right. Once that knot's tied down, though, it won't. You'll see how the it'll slip into the other knot. Yeah, I got that. Okay. okay, and then do another double. And then do another double. So basically. Like that. So there's my X. So I'm going to pull. So that one looks good. See how it's a nice perfect X, basically? Yeah. This one, on the other hand, this is what you don't want to see. <laughs> it's an X, but it's not. When I pull these together, you're going to, you should see two perfect X's right here. Now this knot will be just as strong per se, but to make it pretty, you know it's safe, you know it's done right, you want it to look right. So Okay, so like this X right there. Exactly. Okay. So it looks that X on your, the one you're holding in your hand, the closest one to the, your hand, that one's right. The problem is you didn't oppose the tails. You need tails on each end. So you fed it through the wrong end. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that one knot you learned earlier? The yeah. Big? No, it's all good. So we're just learning. Oh, crap. Now I can't get it untied. <laughs> It must work good. <laughs> so this knot here is, you're going to see when you pull these together, see how you see nice two perfect X's? Yeah. That's, that's the double fisherman's. And we do that exact same thing in rescue, but we wrap it three times. And what's cool about this knot is you can you can make it shorter or longer, but if you put any weight on it, it's going to go right back to those knots. And that's where when you pull on it harder, it's just locking it in even more. Okay, so. And here's a different way to tie the same knot, which yeah. may be easier. The only problem is you, you, have, a, you, have, a, you have one of these, Matt. 
You can't have one of these. You gotta have you gotta have tails on both sides. So you fed it through. Oh, I did it again. Yeah, you fed it through the wrong side. But this knot here, you're gonna love this when you make a prusik loop. And what's cool is if you do it with the small cord like you're doing the P cord, and we're gonna you'll utilize your uh, that larger marine rope you have. And then you'll understand the concept of how we utilize this to make different stuff. All right, I'm gonna try this one more time, and I'm not okay. So I guess I don't understand how you ended up here. Go like, let's start over. See how find short. I'm gonna use that ugly ass day blow stuff. Oh, I know how you did it. All right, hold on. All right. Here's for the viewers if they're, you can go like this, wrap it twice, and then you go through both those holes, and you have the X. God, that shit is nasty. It's just glowing. Like that. Hold on, let me click on the screen. No! <laughs> you still got that bite. See that loop in your thumb right there? You, there should be no loop. Oh, there should be no loop? No, you should have a big ass loop when you're done. What the? Yeah, I'm. That's a little loop though. It's, but you're using, you're going like this, Matt. You're grabbing this right here, and then you're bending it right here, and you're putting the knot on the wrong end. So then you end up with one long piece of rope here, and a and a loop on this side. Instead of, you should have this right here. Can you do this right here? I can't do this right here. What the hell? All right. You should be able to pull those like that. Yeah, I did. And then you should be able to go like this. And they should... No. Okay. If, if you can't pull the two ends like that and they they come together because they have nowhere else to go, that's, that's a way to figure out if it's right, too. Okay. Well, I will retry this. Right. <laughs> I, I will, uh, I mean, rewatch this video. Oh, uh, we got this. We got this. You got to know how to do this loop because it's awesome. You're going to go, holy shit, I can, I'm can. i Superman now. Or Spider-Man, I can climb just about anything. Okay, let's try this again. For the viewers out there, I may start drooling here pretty soon. <laughs> From boredom or what? <laughs> no, because I'm that retarded. <laughs> just don't lick the window behind you. You'll be fine. Okay, so there's the knot. Yeah. Now lift nope. it up higher, Matt. Okay, now what's the long end? Where's the longest rope end? Um, I made it in the middle. Okay, so... Yeah. All right. So grab your right hand and take that one all the way across and oppose the other tail. So your right hand needs to go all the way around to your left hand. Nope, the other way. So don't go in there. Yeah. So so you'll have a tail on each end. There you go. Now now don't make that loop too small. Now tie that exact same knot that you just tied but keep that one rope in the middle, the one that's the loop. So your right hand, tie that knot again around that one line right there. There you go. So make a bend in the rope. There you go. And now wrap it backwards towards your left hand twice. Yep. And then feed it through from your knuckle. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. Now pull those two ropes apart, not the ends, but the center one. There it is. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> See, you only need to know one knot, basically. You flip it over, you stick it through the hole, and then wrap that one rope, and you'll have you'll have a prusik loop. Hold on a second. Hold on. So you can remember what it looks like? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Yo, hold on a sec. I know how to tie that knot. Hold on. Where's my phone at? Yeah, I got to take a picture with my phone. Okay. So I'm going to tie one again real quick, and then we'll talk about the reasons or what it's for again. So I'm going to go real quick. I'm going to use a little bit of tail. All you need on this knot is one inch. Anything over one inch is a waste of rope. Well, do I have to untie this now? If you want to, so you can put it on that other rope, it'd probably be good. Try to make it on the ends. Hold on, now i got to figure out how to untie this damn thing. Um, okay, so, untying. Okay, and th those, of you, those of you that may have just joined us, if you're going to use this in the rescue world, wrap it three times. So I'll do one that's wrapped three times and one that's two, and you'll see the difference. There's really not much difference, but it just holds a little more. I actually need more rope here. So one, two, three. Light it through. Sometime today. And ah. all right, so that's a three wrap. So there's a two with the X going through it. That's how we tie our rescue stuff. But it's basically the same principle. But that's a so we have a three wrap and a two wrap. This would be for fishing or something like that. And this would be more along the lines of life if you're going to put yourself in uh, harm's way. Utilize that rope. Now the stuff we use is a nine millimeter prusik cord, an eight millimeter prusik cord. So this P cord here is only rated at 550 pounds. We would never use this in the realm of rescue. But what we would do, and the reason why we carry P cord as preppers, um, is so we can actually, if we needed to, utilize this kind of material for a single person get out of a, like Matt said, a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> get out of a hotel or get on a hotel. So this is this is something you'd utilize. So the perfectly tied knot, this would only be this long because this knot's not going to go anywhere. If it's going to go anywhere, it's squeezing upon itself, so it's really not going to grow or, or get any longer or suck. This won't suck up into here. And so that would be useful for tying two ropes together then. This knot, yeah, you could use this knot for tying two ropes together. Okay. This is a kick-ass knot right here. Along with the one I showed you earlier, which was the the figure eight follow-through. Yeah. Um, figure eight bend, I mean, where it has two opposing tails. Remember the word bend? It has two opposing tails. But this is, now this is called basically a part of a prusik loop. We have a, a double fisherman or a, Basically, when this becomes something, it's a prusik loop, but you have to do something to it to make it a prusik. So what we'll do is grab that one piece. Did you end up making one of those, Matt, the, uh, a loop of some sort? Yes. Okay. So then grab your marine rope. Oh, no, I untied it, though. Oh, you did? Okay. I'll show you how this works. The reason why you, this, this knot is so awesome, so I'm going to... Since I don't have a, I don't know how I can figure out how to do this. This is the roof. We'll just pretend this is the roof. All right? Let me back up see if you can see it. So you're going to take this knot. You're going to lay it over itself. So you can get the right position here. So you, and you're going to wrap this thing three times. And this is called a three-wrap pressing. Okay, so then you pull the one end, and you're going to end up with this right here. Let me clean it up so it's looking good. All right, so that right there. Yeah. Okay. Now what this rope does, or this prusik does, is this captures, as you pull this rope, it squeezes along here and captures the rope. 
Now it has to be a smaller diameter than the size of the rope you're doing it to in order for it to get a good bite. So if this is the if this is the roof up here, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's up there. I threw the grappling hook on the hotel like we were talking about or whatever. <laughs> Bam, it's up there Bam. like Spider Man, right? Of course Spider Man doesn't need this shit, but you know what That's I'm saying. It. It's it's up in the air. As you go along, you're gonna have three of these. And you're gonna have one that attaches to your pelvis, right? You know, like a climbing harness or a makeshift harness that you make, like a hasty harness. So there's this one you'd have on your harness. And then you're going to have two, two more really long ones. So you're going to have this and ones that reach down to your feet. So as you go, you're going to climb up. So there's going to be two more up here, okay, above your pelvis the one that attaches to your harness or whatever you got. And as you go up, you're going to hold on to these things. So as you go up, you're going to slide. And then this loop, think of not this one because it's short. Think of one that's long. It's attached to your foot. So as you go up, you're going to basically go up like that and then step on it. And then the other one's going to slide up. Right? Right. You're going to have two, and you're just going to keep climbing up. You're stepping. You're using your legs as your muscle because your legs are stronger than your arms. You know, long duration term kind of stuff. So as you're going up, bam, your foot stepping in it. Then the next one comes up, your foot stepping in it. And the whole time, the one on your pelvis, you just keep moving up. And then you're going to go up again. You're going to slide it up, step. Slide this one up, and you're just going to work your way up to the top of the building. Now, you can do the same thing, but go backwards. And how you do that is just basically go backwards, but you break this right here. We call it breaking it. So the way I would hold this prusik, and it's so small. <clears throat> a normal prusik for us is like this big because the rope's a lot fatter. It's more this size here. This is more like 9 millimeter or 8 millimeter prusik cord, but it's not. So you're going to break that. You're going to break that thing right here. And what that's going to do is loosen it. So as you go up or down, say I'll, go, I'll just pretend I'm going down. Then I'm going to set my break by stepping on it. And then the next one I would lower. And then I would go again and then step. The whole time you have your hands on these things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they're, they're attached to your feet, plus the third one's the short one, is attached to your, your harness. And this would be like a good size for that, nice and short. That way you're not falling far away from your rope as you're going up. You're, you're staying tight in your – you want everything because all the weight's going to be going straight down. You can't – you can stick your feet out and do all that, but it's a waste of energy. You have to step down in order for you to go up. Yep. As you go up, then that, that one sets, then here comes your left one. That one sets, and then you fix your, your pelvis one, and then you go up again. I feel like one of those, what are those guys that, uh, you know those guys like that don't talk? The mime. Have, yeah, mimes. I feel, like, I feel like mime, but I'm talking like. <laughs> no, I, I, I completely get what you're, what you're doing, yeah. So that's one really cool thing about this type of, this type of uh, idea. It's easy. You have it in your bug out bag. Say you needed to get it into a tree for Godzilla's coming, right? You know, Godzilla can come and get all of us. <laughs> so you and do the grappling. Gonna save us. <laughs> oh, Godzilla's <laughs> going to save us. That's right. Hopefully he goes to Washington, D.C. and eats some people real quick. Um, yeah, so you throw the grappling hook up, whatever the case is, or, or you just go up and tie off. And then you walk down to the bottom and you practice. We we utilize the stairwells a lot, so we'll we'll go to the top of like a tall parking structure. We'll set up a vehicle, put all the anchors and stuff, and then we'll uh, we'll lower the lines down and we'll just sit there and keep ascending. And as the guys as the guys going, we can even let let out more rope, and he can just keep practicing ascending. And this is more to self rescue. 
you know, we have stuff that we can use to climb or to uh, ascend or descend ropes besides just plain old type of uh, simplistic kind of materials. But this is the stuff where it's nice. You don't have to have anything. You don't have to have a hundred dollar, you know, rack or this or that. You have this. And that's all you need. I'll tell you what. Anybody out there listening, if you're learning nearly as much as I am right now, definitely like bookmark this video and watch it twenty more times. You don't yeah. have to watch me suffer through this. You know. The, <laughs> Those couple, you know, the, the 20 minutes it took me to tie my shoes or whatever. But <laughs> this is definitely awesome information. You know what? And if you guys are actually out there watching, it shows four viewers right now. I don't know. It could be 4,000. I don't know. Or even just one. If we can teach one person something, that's awesome. But i got to give myself a little bit of a half thumb up. If you don't have me subscribed, please do. I'm trying to get to 343 for the – my fellow firefighting brothers that passed away on 9/11 when the twin towers fell, so those 344, 343 fire personnel, I'm really trying to get to the sub of that. I am giving away 400 rounds. I don't really think the 400 rounds is the big deal, but just to be able to say I'm at 343. If I could get to 343 and never get another subscriber, I would really. I mean, I don't know if this makes it sound bad or not, but, I mean, that's my goal. That's what I really care about. So check out my video. I have fishing poles with, uh, you know, the words in memory of FDNY 343. So it's not some bullshit number I came up with. This is a, a very important number that represents a lot, you know, as far as the, the brother firefighters. I don't work for FDNY, but as a, a fellow firefighter, we are a family, whether – you work on the East Coast, the, the West Coast, it's all the same. We're all brothers. So my little plug in that video, and hopefully I get an extra subscriber. I lost two subscribers, or two viewers because of that. Dang it. They're going to miss out on some knots. Oh, well. They're going to watch later and go, oh, I should have stayed because Matt finally got that knot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. I, I remember learning some knots in the Navy and – and, of course, I was, you know, 19 years old, 18 years old. My brain functioned much better back then. It wasn't really as burnout as it is now. Um, but, no, this is all great. I mean, awesome. Anybody that wants to – that has a bug-out bag, I mean, and, and seriously thinks that at some point in time you might have to bug out, this kind of stuff, I mean – I'm ready to make some of these loops and knots, cut them off, burn the ends, and and keep them permanent and throw them in a bug out bag. Yeah, and that's definitely that is definitely a good thing because if you if you have these set up, you can make them the exact length you want that feels comfortable. You know what I mean? Where the because everybody's different. I mean, you can't just say oh, I'm going to get a 10 foot piece of this and I'm going to tie knots and it's going to work for everybody because everybody's tall, taller or shorter, and all that kind of stuff. So you know, and you'll see what works best for you. So it kind of, it, it is definitely a per person kind of deal. I mean, I don't know how tall you are, Matt, but basically we could utilize the same piece of rope. It may be more comfortable for you or me, you know, depending on what it's cut at. But um, to have something pre pre uh, done like that is is a good idea. Yeah, like make uh make the the prusset, you know, the the ones for your feet at least. Yeah. You know, like that one, I'm six foot tall, so, I mean, I could make a couple of those, you know, roll them up and stick them right in my bug out bag, and they're there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And you can always use that for something else, too. You know, if you needed to, you know, I don't know, build a spear with your knife and you needed to wrap, you know, a big long stick or whatever you're making, you know, it can be cut up just as easy as the rest of the stuff in your bag. So that's kind of cool, for sure. All right, you want to try that knot again? Or no. you want to move on? <laughs> you should try just just grab a piece of rope, Matt, because this is just as strong almost. If you if you can't tie this knot or you forget this knot, if you can just do a grandma's ass knot, just a bam, shazam. 
you know, this is an overhand knot basically yeah. with two pieces of rope. You're still going to be able, you still got to learn the press it, you still got to oh, learn that. Yeah, I'll do that real quick. Okay, so just tie a whatever knot at the end, you know, whatever you want to call it. I will call it my knot. There you go. Okay, get my big rope out. Throw it over. One, two, three. All right. Yeah, like that. Oh, I get this out of the way, but yeah. Clean it up a little bit because that's a knot that really needs to be cleaned up because you're going to basically be putting your life on it. You know what I mean? So you want to really uh, make sure it's done well. So you're going to grab these two knots, and you can hold it like this. One, two, three, and then just pull them together. And then clean up. The things you're going to look for when you're tying this knot is you're going to want that the farthest out ones to be on the outside going around and biting on the loop on this bite right here. Does that make sense? Like that. So the farthest out ones will be the ones that have this piece on it right there that the one that goes around yeah Okay. Like so. Exactly like that. So that knot holding 550 pounds, or that rope, that P cord, if it's 550 P cord or 750 P cord, you know, and say you weigh 200 pounds. You're gonna, like we talked about earlier, you're going to lose some for the knot, but basically if that's all you had, you're going to have the one on your pelvis plus the other two. So you're going to kind of be able to take some of that weight of not being on just one per se. So you, would, you could, I don't think I can legally say you could use this, but I would say I would use it if I needed to. Does that make sense? Yeah. This oh, will yeah. hold us. This would hold us. And what's kind of cool there's, I don't know how familiar you are with p cord, but inside of here is seven strands. If you tear it apart, you'll see seven strands. And I've sat there, you know, just being like two feet off the ground, but hooked into a harness. And I sit, th I've sat there and I've cut each strand with a knife to see how many will hold me. And you, you're pretty, it's pretty amazing to, to, you know, there's no shock load, and I'm not doing anything, which. You know, if I was to shock load the system, I would, it would snap in a heartbeat, and I'd fall to my death if I wasn't two feet off the ground. But, like, one strand is pretty damn impressive. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet. So it's pretty crazy. Um, trucker's hitch. I don't know if I can pull up a trucker's hitch in front of – we can try. Do you remember the – do you ever use the trucker's hitch? You gotta, oh, you need to know the trucker's hitch, Matt. Because you're moving, buddy. You might have to strap a piano or something on top of that uh, rider truck or whatever that <laughs> fancy yeah, no. truck is, you know, one of your big blue screens or whatever the fuck you got over there. I don't know. 
a bazooka. You might have to put, you might have to strap a bazooka and a ladder on the top of that Penske truck. So uh, this could be a good knot for you to learn. You want to try that one? Let's do it. Let's try it. I mean, if nothing else, you can clip this video apart and get a good comedy reel out of me trying to do these. <laughs> hey, you're doing great. Let me go grab something to drink. No worries. So there's a couple people out there still. We got a uh, says four viewers. So I don't know if that's me, Matt, and uh, um, two of you guys that have been around listening to us for a while, which is awesome. I appreciate you guys checking this out. I'd like to get you guys on here if you got some rope um, and you're willing to come on. Google Plus YouTube and want to try a couple knots. Uh, put the link or put your uh, that you want in. I guess would be the words to say, and uh, we'll figure out who it is. And I will. Right now, I can't read the um, the comments, so Matt's kind of doing that for us. But if you want to jump in here, you are more than welcome, and uh, it'll be fun. So I kind of told those guys if they want to, if there's someone out there that wants to try this and join in with us, Matt, um, they're gonna put it in the comments section. So if if they do, I'll I'll Google Plus them and give them a link or whatever. Hopefully it'll work. Johnny Mastered Arms done came out there. Hey, what's up, Johnny Mastered Arms? Jerry I Pugh. I him a link earlier, but I don't know if he had stuff going on earlier today or what. But glad you're out there, buddy. Sig, you know, it's funny when I made that one video, I was trying to be kind of a, having a little fun with that one uh, home defense gun or whatever. I knew you were going to put SIG on there. <laughs> Johnny Master at Arms is a big SIG loving guy, which is awesome. Pretty good guns. Are yeah, good? he is. All right. Here's one you're going to want to know before you go to Arizona, Matt. Okay? Let's do this one first. Everybody liked this one last time we did it. It's called the handcuff nut. I'm not going to like that. Why are you going to like that? Because I've been in the real thing. They're not fun. Yeah, but I know a friend of yours might, might want to pretend and have fun with it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to build this right here. You basically put your hands in here. I'll show you how to do it here in a sec. These will tighten up, and then you have a handcuff knot. All right. So you grab a piece of rope, and you cross your arms before you grab the rope. So you look like this. And then you're just going to cross them. And then one's going to open this way, and one's going to open that way. So as long as you got this part down so far, you're rocking. Is that what you got? Yep. Okay, so you're going to take this piece here and put it through that one and then you're going to take this one and go through there that's it now wait, hold on let me click on you so I can watch so now take your you got it so you take your left hand which is this one yeah and go towards the screen and around through that hole. Yep. And then take the other one which you just grabbed. No, 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 you went too far. Don't let that twist go in there. Yeah. Now with your right hand, yeah, with your right hand, grab that one you have sitting right there. Yep. Now pull that through towards you through that hole. Grab it from the other side. There, there you go. And then do the exact opposite of what you just did, but the same thing on the other hand. There it is. That's All the right. handcuff. That's it. And then is it like a slip knot when you get done? Yeah, so you so now you put your hands through. Ah, uh, I see. Like this. And then as they as the other person pulls it tight, these cinch up like this. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's the handcuff knot. And then you'd basically, you'd basically go through the center of the two wrists and crank it down and then tie some fancy knot that you learned earlier today. <laughs> That could be used for all kinds of stuff. Heck yeah. All right, so remember how we talked about we talked about how rope loses its its uh, a percentage depending on the knot. Yeah. This knot is a tensionless knot, which like we use rescue rope, which holds nine thousand pounds. But now they're making some stuff up to 12,000 pounds. But you're basically just going to build a figure eight on a bike, like we learned earlier. Clean it up here. So there's the figure eight on a bike. Okay, so you're good. Now, here's that big tree again. I should be a sponsor for these guys. These, I drink so many of these gosh dang things. They should hook me up. So what you're going to do is you're going to go around the object. Let's see if I can figure out how to do this. You're going to go around the object three to four times. And then you're going to tie in... You would need a carabiner for this, but you're going to tie in this hook right here, or the loop. You're going to clip a carabiner into here, and along this thing, along the rope, the working end of the rope. So with this knot, we use these in high lines when you're stretching across from, say, one building to another building or across the canyon. So this would be a carabiner, right? So as I apply pressure... I have to let go, but as I apply pressure to this, the tension's going around and biting on all this rope, so the knot is never utilized. Like this will be floppy the whole time, even if you have someone, you know, you have someone on here. This this knot is just basically hanging here because because of the wraps. So that's called a tensionless hitch. Does that make sense? And it looks like that. Okay. And if you guys, a good plug, if you guys want to see knots made where it does it for you and it has little pictures all the way through if you need to figure out a section, it's called Grogs, G-R-O-G-S, and it gives you everything from fishing knots, rescue knots, to home knots, like where you're doing whatever, to a... Um, Decorative knots, so the whole gamma, the marine, like uh, marine knots that you use to tie your boat, that kind of stuff to, you know, to rescue knots. So it's really cool if you get a chance and it's animated. So you, you can probably type in animated knots and a uh, grogs, G R O G S will come up, and it's pretty bitching how they, they basically take a picture of each little time they move the rope. And as the, you know, like click, 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 and it looks like it's moving, you know, to, to be animated, and then bam, it's a knot. It's kind of a cool way to learn knots. So that's definitely something that you can uh, take a look at. Or if you know somebody wanting to learn knots, you just share this video from Is Your Six <laughs> Covered, and he'll teach you all about them right here. <laughs> yeah. Dang it. All right. <laughs> So remember how we talked about inline directional eights, the one that was uh, basically you utilize. Remember it was this one, Matt, where you flip it over. We talked about this earlier. If you're just joining us, and then and then it's directional. Yes. Remember that one? Okay. Now another knot, which is multi-directional, but still actually workable in a different direction, meaning it's actually a knot made for pulling in either direction. It's called a butterfly knot. Now, you have to start. I don't know if this ends up being backwards when I do this or not. You basically, go like this. You start here. You wrap it, and then you wrap through the middle, like that. And then you take 
you take this, the farthest one where your fingertips are, you go over the other ones, and then you slide it underneath all of those. Okay, and then you have this. What you do is you just pull it. You're going to see that grow. This is These are coming in tight or to tight and go around. Now, that's a butterfly knot. And this yeah. is a knot that you can use in either this direction or that direction, and it doesn't mess up your percentages as much as if you just tied in a, a knot that wasn't made for that. So that's a butterfly knot. And I can see why. It looks like a butterfly. Yeah. Stings like a bee, though, so don't touch it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the butterfly knot. Some people call it the alpine, like we talked about with people with different names. It's that. Some people call it an alpine butterfly knot. Now, talk to the Navy. You ready for this knot? I know you're going to get this one like like, like that. I'm, I'm, I'm still going to be tying it, Matt, and you're going to already have it done. You ready for this one? Let's do it's it. It's the Bolin. Do you remember that one? In the? Uh, I remember the name. I've heard the name. the name. All right, so... We're going to build a six, and I don't know if you get to see a six or a backward six, but this is the one where you always hear the rabbit goes in the hole and around the tree and back down the hole. Right. So you're going to, here's the tail, the short end down here, and this is, this is the uh, long rope. So you're going to go up, around the tree, per se, and then back down the hole. So you're going to end up getting, uh, you have to capture this rope here around it, and then the two coming down. So the rabbit went up the hole, around, and then back down. But when you pull this knot, you have to grab both of these, so the short tail and the loop, and then you pull the single rope on top. And then you end up with a glowing rope that you can't see shit. <laughs> Hold on. Like this. Uh, yeah. I believe so. Yep. Now, food for thought. Both of these knots are great. But this one, the difference between a Navy Bolin and a Fireman Bolin is where the tail comes out. So I build a six. If I go in the outside way first and then in where my tail where my tail is inside of the loop. That's the way I did it. That's a navy bowling. If you go this way and you make the tail go around and back down, but the tail is now on the outside, like that, that's a fireman bowling. I think the Navy went inside because they, they used to utilize it for people. You know, they put it around their, like their chest, per se. And this would, because these knots aren't that great, they basically need an over and an knot here to make it more safe. But the, as this was a, well, as the person was in here, the body of them, they would it would capture more friction, so it wouldn't it was less likely to slip. But we don't use this knot for hardly anything in the rescue room. It's just one of those knots that you know every fireman's got to learn. So now a clove hitch. And we're getting, we're getting fairly close to being done. But the clove hitch is going to be awesome for you to learn because you're going to tie stuff that's round. Say you're building a, a raft uh, uh, made of big trees or whatever it is. Anytime you're going to – not anytime, but if you're going to tighten – or if you're going to uh, tie something around something round, the clove hitch is a, is a, is a pretty good knot. So I need to figure out a way. Oh, here we go. I think this is going to work. All 
All right, see that X right here? Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. If I can keep it in the same spot. You're going to you're going to wrap the rope around itself and then you're going to slide this tail underneath both of those X's and it's going to end right here. So let me work on that. I don't know if I can do it while I'm holding it. More than likely, I'm going to spill my drink on my keyboard. <laughs> so that's 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 a clove hitch right there. Yeah, I've done those before. Okay. So this knot is nice because if you're going to build, if you're going to build a, I think what's as cool is if you have, say, say you need a high point or advantage, uh, a high anchor, you can grab two huge logs and put them together, and you can do a wrap and frap. Well, this is where you're starting to apply stuff. So if you had two short sticks and you wanted to make it longer, you would start with this, and then the next can can would be right here, and you would wrap this, and I should probably get it. But basically, you're going to start with this. You're going to wrap the two pieces of wood, and then you're going to you would end with the clove hitch as well. Now, if you wanted to build a high point, you're going to put the two cans together. You're going to wrap one, then you're going to put this can here, and then you're going to do the same thing. We're not trying to make a stick longer. We're trying to keep two sticks together. We're going to wrap them again, and then you're going to close, you're going to wrap it now, which means go between, go between here, so it's going to suck these two pieces of wood together, and then do the clove hitch again at the end of all your wraps and then your fraps. So it'll go clove hitch, wraps, and then you're going to go over this way, which is fraps, and then do another clove hitch to end it. So what you do with that is now you take these two, think of these as two long poles. You're going to kick them out like that. Now you have a big A-frame. Yeah. Right? So then you can have a high point. So like say, say you want to uh, repel off of a, a cliff. But you don't want to have to like crawl down, crawl over the edge of the cliff, and then like get on your rope system. You can elevate your your high point anchor. So the anchors would be way back here, but then your rope's gonna go between the two. You'll build a sling and down, so then you can just be at um, waist height, and then you know, and then lower yourself down the building. But you can do a lot of stuff with this. So this would be also an A-frame. You can make this as a shelter. You know, a bomb ass heavy duty one. You know, you build a few of those, and then you you start building like a ridge beam, and you can really make yourself a bomb shelter with the with just knowing those knots right there. But it all starts with this clove hitch. So that's a knot you can use, or you could carry a tent. <laughs> yeah, or you could just pack a tent. And... Yeah, or you could just pack a tent. I built. I made a video on uh, uh, out of a. Uh, a 12 by 10, it's just a, a you know a regular cover, and it's a, I called it the six tent, and I made it and I designed it where it has walls and, and a bottom, all out of one all out of one tarp shelter. It's pretty oh, nice. sweet. I got that's actually I got four almost 15,000 views on that one. It went it went crazy for my little channel. I don't have anything even near close to that. I think my second closest video is like 5,000 views on how to camouflage a, an AR or something. I wish I got that kind of view, so good for you. That was cool. But that was my first video, so it's been up forever. The tent one I just did like six months. I don't know if it got on. There was a lady, and I think, honestly, I think this is what happened, is there was a lady that had a question about how to build it. So I, I made another video on just how to answer, you know, just answering her, but it was a video that everybody else could watch. And I think that lady works for YouTube because after after I did that, I was getting like 300 hits a day. And I was like, I was like, wow. So I really think that lady like, uh, you know, and I gave her a shout out and, hey, I'm doing this video for you and, and whoever else is out there on the YouTube world or something like that. But it went stupid crazy after that. So I don't know if she hooked me up or what. Well, she probably is part of some big bushcraft community or or bushcraft type website or something like that. Yeah, 
I don't know. I was pretty excited. That's. I was like, wow, that's pretty awesome. So how long have we been here? An hour and a half. Let's. Uh. I think we had a good time. I think uh, we should save some for maybe another another chat and another ropes and not steel. So I keep it at an hour and a half. You know, it's funny. You see some of those chats, and I have one that was like five and a half hours. Like, who the hell is really going to sit there for five and a half hours and you know listen to us when when uh, it's like, I mean, unless it's something really really good, you know. But that's a long time for a chat for someone to just sit on the same channel. So. Yeah, I think, uh, I definitely appreciate it, Matt, for you coming out here and helping me out. Um, and like I told you earlier, when we were offline, congratulations, your channel is rocking. You're doing some bitching videos, um, and you know it's showing. Your subs are going through the roof, and you deserve every one of those because you're putting out great content that means a lot to a lot of people and. I don't know if this. I don't. I I like the guy, so I don't think I'm. When I say it, I'm offending you. I hopefully not. And I, I really like. I like Alex Jones, and I really think you're like a more professional, um, nicer. You know what I mean? You're given the same, not the same stuff, but you do it in a more professional manner. You're not all get all fucking retarded and start screaming. Oh, 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 you know, and that's probably what gets his viewers. But but uh, you you really. You really have great content, so uh, I, I appreciate that. I I appreciate that a lot, man. Yeah, no worries. That's true. I uh, I'll, I go on your site and say, hey, has Matt got anything else new popping up? You know, so not lately. I've been uh, pretty busy with trying to get stuff done around here for the move. So yeah, well, congratulations on that, and I hope everything works out great. And uh, you'll be a neighbor. You'll be my neighbor pretty soon. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, so uh, maybe we'll do a we'll end up doing a shoot out there, and we'll all come out meet in Arizona or something. That'd be awesome. Because you can't really shoot here. I mean, you're not allowed to even. I think they're going to change the band capacity. To, you're allowed to have one bullet, but it has to be in a pocket and a lock pocket, but not in the shirt that you're wearing. It has to be in the one at your house. So you can <laughs> carry a gun now, but you're not allowed to have bullets. <laughs> <laughs> You can carry a gun, it just can't have a trigger. It just yeah, it can't have a trigger and a barrel. It's not allowed to have one of those either, because those are those are you know mean, those are bad, and uh, and it has to bend all the way back and point back at you. So if you really have to use it, you save the bad guy from having to like hurt his wrist or anything when he's attacking you. So it just makes it easier, because we 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 don't want to offend the the bad people. That are trying to attack us, so it just makes it easier. So everybody's voted, you know, and they approve that because that's what they do. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll see those come out pretty soon. I'm gonna do a gun review on that, but I won't bring it to the range because then, you know, I'll be done. There won't be any your <laughs> six covered. <laughs> Thanks, brother. I appreciate every bit of it. Thanks for Thanks. learning, having fun, smiling, laughing. Um, Tell Andrew I said hi, and all the folks out there that are going to watch this later, thanks again for watching it. And uh, don't forget to tune in to Resist the Tyranny because the show is awesome. And all the other Resist the Tyranny this and that and this and more of this with some of that with all the uh, – what are all those damn things? The uh, the little bird deal and the this and that. <laughs> Hook it up, Matt. What are you talking about? What am I trying to say, damn it? Resist the Tyranny – Twitter, some shit, and resist the tyranny, something else with a bird, and all those things. Help me out, buddy. Okay, it's uh, the, the the bird, the Twitter bird thing is <laughs> resist tyranny seventy six, and then of course there's uh, resist the tyranny on G plus and on Facebook uh, like page, and uh, here on YouTube and uh, resist tyranny dot com. Well done, my friend. Well done. All right. Well, have a great night. I'm probably going to stay on here, but I'm going to make a phone call to my lovely wife and make sure she got to the beach all right. So, uh, again, thank you very much, Matt. I do appreciate it. Thanks for having it. me on, man. Have a good one. All right. You Peace. Later. Bye.